All right, let's see here. Doing roll call. Is uh, Karen here? Okay. All right, sit up front. Um, racist friend. And you can sit next to me, right next to me. Um, all lives matter, friend. Uh, yeah, there's room in the front. There's some seats. Um, there's still some people aren't right here. Um, did you just clutch your purse? Yeah, we got, we got room for you. All right. All right, let's see here. Um, do you think that white people are just as oppressed as black people? All right, yeah, you can sit on the floor right in front of me, all right? And um, I could have sworn the other day you asked to touch my hair, so we got room for you, sis. Come on, come on. Welcome to this video. You like my shirt? All right, so welcome to my channel. So if you were sent this video, it you know, nine times out of 10, you need to be educated and that's okay. I'm not gonna tell you that you suck because you're racist or that you know you should go kill yourself. I'm not gonna do none of that. My job here is to just educate you on what's going on in the world. Understanding different opinions is the only way that we will you know, make progress in this world. So you know, go ahead and get comfortable because you're in for quite a long video. Not only do we blacks and you know people of color experience racism and oppression with our own eyes, we we feel it. We feel it. So it's not only our opinion, but there is a lot of facts, studies to prove it. So, you know, listen with open ears, okay? Let's first talk about policing and profiling, okay? Stop and frisk data presents that only 3% of those encounters produce like evidence of a crime. 3%. Huge percentages of black and Latino people have been pulled over with this uh, stop and frisk method. So what that means is that 97% of people are wrongfully convicted or wrongfully stopped just because of the color of their skin. All right, this one I'm gonna have to read it off. An August 2019 study published by the National Academy of Sciences based on police shooting databases found that between 2013 and 2018, Black men were 2.5 times more likely than the white man to be killed by police, and that black men, listen to this one, black men have a one in a thousand chance of being killed by a police officer. So in a room of a thousand people, one of them will be killed by a police officer. Black women were 1.4 more times likely to be killed than a white woman. Latino men were 1.3 to 1.4 times more likely to be killed than white men. So now do you see how kind of crazy you sound when you say all lives matter? Oh, okay. In Minneapolis, of the reports of police reported you no know, uses of force, black people make up 59%. 59% and the other races make up 41%. So what that means is that there are 59% of black people will you no know, experience force by police officers. Innocent black people are seven times more likely to be convicted of murder. They are 3.5 times more likely to be convicted of sexual assault and they are 12 times more likely to be convicted of drug related crimes. In New York City, 88% of police stops involved black and Hispanic people, while only 10% involved white people. And of those stops, 70% were innocent. So the, are you understanding what I'm saying? Another study shows that black and white people use drugs at the same rate, yet black people are six times more likely to be convicted of it. Moving on to the death sentence. You know, this is my favorite one. A 2000 study commissioned by then Florida Governor Jeb Bush found that the state had, as of that time, never executed a white person for killing a black person. 2000, that was 20 years ago. That wasn't a brick ago, that was 20 years ago. In Delaware, according to a study in 2012, black defendants who kill white victims are seven times as likely to receive the death penalty as they are of if they killed a black person. So let me just put that into plain terms. What that means is if a black person kills a white person, the judges and the prosecutors are like, oh my God, uh-uh, kill him. 
the electric chair. But if a black person kill a black person, oh, it's just black on black crime, you know? Let these thugs do what thugs do. To continue on with that statement, black defendants who kill white victims are more than three times as likely to be sentenced to death as are white defendants who kill white victims. Do you see the racism? Another 2000 study shows that federal prosecutors were about 50% more likely to offer a plea bargain to white people and not black people. Moving on to judges and sentencing. A survey of data from the U.S. Sentencing Commission in 2017 shows that if a white man and a black man commit the same crime, that the black man will have a sentence 20% longer. A 2018 study shows that the darker the skin color of a black person, the greater the disparity is for arrest, for sentencing, and more. Once black children are in the criminal justice system, they are 18 times more likely to be sentenced as adults in comparison to white children. Moving on to school suspensions, to discrimination in schools, and to discipline. Black students take on more debt than white people. In Chicago schools, black male students are five times more likely to be suspended in comparison to white or Asian male students, and black women are seven times more likely. A 2011 study of school discipline in Texas, that's where I'm from, it found that a black student has a 31% greater chance of being disciplined in comparison to white or Hispanic students. Moving on to wealth and employment. White families hold 90% of the nation's wealth. For every $100 a white family earns in income, black families earn $57. $57 in comparison to $100. Do you see the gap? Black people with college degrees are twice as likely to be unemployed in comparison to every other race. Job applicants with identical resumes are 50% more likely to be called back if they have a white sounding name. So should I feel special because my name's Kimberly? Does that sound white? Does that mean I'll get the job? Guests with black names get a less positive review on Airbnb by the property owner. People of color are shown fewer homes and apartments in comparison to white people. Black ownership is at an all-time low. Blacks are with 42% and whites are with 72%. Black workers receive fewer employer benefits in comparison to white people. And lastly, healthcare. Ooh, cause this one gets me real riled up. Black doctors are less likely to receive research grants in comparison to their peers with similar credentials. Black women are three to four times more likely to have a pregnancy-related death in comparison to white women. Blacks are far more likely to have a lack of access to emergency medical care. The hospitals that they do have available are less funded and have doctors and you know workers that are less experienced. So, you know, what does that tell you about you know, the care that black people get? And lastly, white people have better quality health care in comparison to 34% Hispanics and 40% of black people. So when you say all lives matter, when you say racist things, when you say that you know, all other races get oppressed, it's not just black people, but white people get oppressed too, then I don't know, maybe you should be just as angry you know, that as we are, or um, I don't know, maybe you should rewatch this video and take a look at the facts. In the description box below, I have links of where I got this information from. So you can fact check me if you want, but the proof is in the pudding. We are living in a racist America. So to say that racism doesn't exist, when not only do we feel it, we feel that within our daily interactions, but studies, science shows that we're correct, that we are entitled to how we feel because facts prove it. So what we are trying to do is not only push this movement that we've had since what, 2014, we are trying to make sure that we have our rights isn't it that the Eighth Amendment says that we have protection against cruel and unjust punishment? Yet how many um, black people are on death row and they're innocent? 
How many people have died by the hands of the police and it was unjust? How many black people have experienced cruel and unusual punishment for just living, for getting an Arizona ice tea and some skills, for holding a toy gun? How many? So what we ask of you is to stand on the right side of history. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to have some, you know, form of opinion that was incorrect. Because now that, you know, somebody like me or somebody else may have informed you of what is correct, you have, like, you have a chance to redeem yourself. You have a chance to help us push this movement. I'm not gonna use, you know, silly analogies to get you guys to understand that all lives are not gonna matter until black lives matter, until black transgender lives matter, until everybody matters, that is when all lives will matter. The, the equation not make sense. It's 2020 and we're still talking about racism. Get a grip. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys feel more educated than you were before. Even if you are, you know, a black person, even if you are an ally, at least you, you know, can have more of an argument when you're, you know, discussing this matter with the Karens of the world, with the racist people, with the All Lives Matter advocates. At least you have a little bit more something to talk about. All right, that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. This is Magic Crew, and I'm signing out.